In this video, I'll be talking through reassembly of my Featherweight Robot Bookworm. Its first and so far only event was Extreme Robots Cheltenham in 2019, where it's declared the winner of one of the melees. This video shows how Bookworm is put together. The Bookworm started out in CAD. Uh, so this is Fusion 360, uh, showing the original design for Bookworm, including the, the new drums and the new fork design, and a uh, number of improvements from Mark 1. So here we have the, the insides, uh, with all the armour and drive, the drum, the weapon motor, everything kind of stripped out, uh, ready to be reassembled. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the weapon motor mount here on the front. We have a uh, weapon ESC uh, link block with fuse, and then all the gubbins at the back. So it's powered by a pair of 5060 uh, motors. Uh, so those have got uh, 3D printed guards over them to, so I can pack everything around it quite tightly. Uh, here's a closer inspection of the, the 3D printed guards. Uh, so it all kind of clicks together as a bit of a, a, bit of a jigsaw puzzle uh, with the center mount uh, then bolted through from the bottom um, and that gives us uh, everything clipped together with the, the sort of minimal of, of fasteners. Uh, we then have the armour blocks and the uh, rear blocks. Uh, so these have been uh, had weight saving done to them um, with the Dremel. <laughs> I don't own a mill so uh, this was very carefully hand done. Um, maybe not the best of jobs but uh, certainly sufficient. And then we have this whole tray of fasteners, uh, which are all the the attachments for the, the armor, uh, all the attachments for kind of holding the whole thing together. So we've got some bolts, barrel nuts, uh, the plates for the outside, which you'll see later, some bearings, nylon spacers, So here's the weapon motor. Uh, this is a 50-50 motor. Uh, we also have an in-runner configuration not shown here. Uh, so one thing we do with these motors is we change the shaft for an 8mm shaft. Uh, they come with a 6mm shaft uh, stepped by default, but they will take an 8mm shaft, so why not change it? So here's the, the rear of the robot, and into these we have some locking nuts. Uh, but actually getting them into the robot is actually quite painful. Um, because they trying to position them is, is just a nightmare. So instead we made this little tool, uh, which we put the, the nut into, which then slots into the, the hole in the rear, allowing us to then put the bolt through, and it keeps the nut in position to allow us to, to bolt it through um, quite easily. So here's the, the rear of the robot now reattached uh, with the bolt through the side. Uh, there's also barrel nuts in the bottom as well to, uh, to hold the, the base to the back of the robot. Uh, there'll be some more to go in the top as well to hold the top to it, uh, but we'll get to that. So here's the weapon motor remounted against its plate uh, to check it spins. All nice. The cables go across this notch at the top uh, to get them out, out of the way so they don't get kind of pinched on the lid. Uh, and note, Loctite. Um, the screws in the motor, and most of the, the screws, to be honest, are Loctited in uh, to make sure that they don't move anywhere uh, when the robot's in operation. Uh, so here we have the, the bulkheads. Uh, so they, they, these slot into the, the aluminium on the either side. Uh, you'll notice that they're kind of recessed to, to, uh, to fit. Uh, again, uh, lovely Dremel job. And as you can see, we've, we've now bolted it through. Uh, so it bolts and clamps the, the plastic HCP parts to the aluminium. Uh, there's a bolt through the, the side of both sides uh, that keeps the front kind of attached to it. And again, through the sides, uh, through the middle to kind of keep the whole thing as rigid as possible. Uh, so we move on to the drive. Uh, these are shoulder bolts. Um, there are 12 shoulder bolts. Uh, they just go pop through the sides. Uh, so these are for the front. Uh, so a little note here. Uh, when I originally assembled it, the 
motor plates kind of got in the way so i had to take a file to it just to give it a sort of uh recess so that i can actually get the bolt through the sh chassis because it was impossible to put together without it and again shoulder bolt through the rear of the chassis for the rear wheels um exactly the same mechanism exactly the same system and so here we are we have uh, bolts in all of the wheel positions uh, ready to put the wheels onto. Uh, and here we have an example of the wheel. Uh, so this is a HCPE wheel uh, that has bike tyre screwed into it. Uh, then screwed into that is a HTD5 pulley. And that's about it, really. Not exactly the most sophisticated thing, but uh, works well for this purpose. And so here we go, we'll assemble the, the front of the uh, the drive system. So with the shoulder bolt, we then add some components. Uh, so we have a nylon washer that goes on, a thin truss bearing, another nylon spacer, and the wheel itself. Then another thrust bearing and another nylon washer. And the whole thing just spins on the shoulder bolt. So much the same thing for the rear of the drive. Uh, so we have a washer and a thrust bearing. And we have the rear wheel. Again, it's HTP, but this time it's got a Mod 1 spur on the back, uh, which then interlocks with the, the motor's spur gear, uh, and the pulley, which will then go out to the front of the drive. So we we'll fit that. Then another thrust bearing. And another spacer. So here we are. Here's what it looks like with all four of the wheels fitted to the robot. With the belt fitted, you just have a bit of a, a test fit just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, the belt's slack at this point because nothing's bolted together. Uh, to bolt it together, we've got this, this aluminium plate uh, and that goes between the two wheels and between the two shoulder bolts, keeping the spacings correct to make sure that the, the belt stays on. There's also two bolts that go through the chassis here to kind of hold everything in place, which will fit later. With the, uh, the nuts on, uh, you then have these little screws and they go into flats on the shoulder bolts to make sure that the shafts don't spin uh, because they, they span originally and uh, it just wore away at the aluminium. Check the belts, check that everything's kind of plays properly. Yeah, it looks okay. Now onto the drum. So these are all the parts of the drum. We have a uh, 20 mil titanium shaft, have some taper roller bearings, they've got these shaft spacer attacher things, they go onto the shaft and they sit in, inside to hold the bearings in but also to bolt into the chassis, make sure nothing moves, and the drum itself. Uh, this is made of a aluminium inner, uh, it's got the, uh, the rings in there for the bearings, I'll show you how that works. They just sit in there like that. Yeah, same on the other side. And then there's a recess in the uh, the aluminium drum, which is where the belt fits. Uh, it's designed to slip. It's not designed to grip. Um, so that when the drum hits something, it doesn't um, 
send all that back through the motor. So that it's, de it's designed to slip basically. Uh, teeth look okay. Uh, so from the Cheltenham event, um, it hit quite a few things, but yeah, teeth look okay. So I won't bother to change them at this point. Uh, then we've got the pulley, uh, which goes on the motor. And again, is for the belt. Uh, this part is tufted. So this, this part is the bit that will uh, spin the drum. Uh, it's weight saved quite a lot uh, because these, these pulleys are heavy. Uh, so it's to try and get it within weight. So I've already fitted the, the weapon pulley and the belt because uh, it's a pain. So I did that off camera. Uh, but now we'll, we'll try and fit the drum into the chassis. So shaft first, we'll just place that in in its uh, in its hole in the bulkheads, just to kind of hold it in place for the time being. And then we'll get hold of the drum. Uh, so this has all got to go in as one thing. Uh, so the drum, the the bearings, and the spacers have all got to kind of be placed in, and then the shaft goes all the way through all of the the items, uh, all all in one go. So this is quite a a bit of a it's a bit of a fiddle to actually get it into the robot, uh, as you'll probably see. Uh, so here goes. So here we have fitted. Uh, just move the robot forward so that uh, it's not sitting on everything so you can actually test spin it. Yeah, looks good. Then we have these attachments on the side. Uh, they, they recess into the chassis. Um, unlike at Cheltenham where they were sat on the outside, these now sat inside the, uh, the bulkheads. Uh, so and they've got five M4 bolts go through it. And these go through these panels, through the bulkheads, through into the spaces and clamp everything together on the, the end of the shaft. So here we are with the, the bolts in, um, holding everything together. Um, all looks good. And we'll just do a little test spin just to make sure everything's all okay again. Yes, yeah, looks good. Yeah, good job. So these are the side armor plates for the robot. Uh, and if they've got the fronts kind of already attached to them, pocketed again, as shown earlier. And then we've got these blocks on the front. Uh, now these blocks are, well, they get they get hit a lot. Um, so I've gone through quite a few, but I do have quite a few spares. So I've, I've put a fresh one on this time. And then these just sit on the side of the robot, like this. And then there's two bolts I was on about going through the whole chassis before. Here we, here we are. And then there's also bolt holes on the top and bottom to hold the whole thing to the chassis. So you'll know there's a little recess in the front of the panel here. Uh, wasn't originally intended to be in the robot. Um, but this is to work around a, a little bit of a, a, a CAD faux pas in that once the tires are on, it actually started rubbing against the front of the robot. So it was recessed basically to give enough room for the drive to go around and not rub on the chassis. The robot's on its end now, um, just to demonstrate the, the next part of the assembly. So we have a lot of these barrel nuts and they go through the, the side of the robot like so, and then the bolt goes through and we'll clamp into the, the nut. And there's there's lots of these all the way down the robot. So for a bit further along the build, here's where we've put them in. Um, I haven't put them in all the holes because for weight saving reasons, uh, I want to shave off a few grams and some of them aren't really uh, that important. Uh, there's probably more bolts in it than it probably needs. Uh, then there's this that was noticed as well. Uh, so the actual chassis is cracked at the bottom. Um, I will probably put a panel across there, a little bit of metal or something across there to, to hold that in, in for the future. So 
So here's the lid. Uh, so I'll just move the, the locking bar out, out the way. So the, the lid just sits, sits on top. Um, and again, this will go through a load of those uh, barrel nuts and that's just be bolted through. Uh, it's demonstrated by this on the side here. So again, these will just go through the side and then we'll put a bolt through the top and bolt into it. And here's the, the lid for the, the front motor. Um, this originally was part of the, the top lid, um, but it got all whacked out of shape. So this has a uh, 12 volt LED strip in it. Uh, the rear of the robot also has one in as well. Uh, the, the one in the rear is used for de determining the drives on and the one over the weapon for when the weapon's on. So again, a bit further along, we've put some bolts in and we've screwed the lid down. Uh, so it's looking quite assembled at this point. Finally, the battery cover. Uh, so this now has these two little um, uh, lips, if you like, and they fit into the underneath the lid and between the other components. Uh, this is to work around a problem where the lid actually just separated from the robot. Um, I think DB12 hit it, possibly. Um, so now there's no chance of this actually happening again. Now bolt it through. And the lid isn't coming off now. So resolve that problem. So let's do a weigh. Uh, we're looking for 13.6. And we've got 13.210. And I've left the locking bar in. So with the battery and the locking bar out, that should be uh, well within weight. Finally, we've got these forks. Uh, so this replaces the design that we did have, which were two hard ox plates and a bit of HDP uh, with some uh, box steel. Here's one of the finished articles. And these just pivot on a, uh, on a titanium shaft. Um, and we should scrape the ground quite nicely. Uh, I forgot to take footage of this, but here's a nice photo of it. And bookworm is complete. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching.